let's start by looking at a definition of enterprise architecture. And perhaps one of the better ways to work through that is to talk about an analogy. So I'm going to introduce a car analogy and we're going to use it through, throughout this particular subject. So imagine that you are, your business is a car or a vehicle. And that business needs to deliver products between two cities, let's say Melbourne and Sydney, for example. Now, the point of that business is that it operates as one single cohesive unit. In other words, that it, the whole business pulls together and moves forward in one direction. So if that's your business, you can break little pieces of this vehicle up into different components. In other words, um, you've got the uh, executive team within your organization while they're driving this vehicle. So they're behind the steering wheel and they're looking out. And they're looking out the windscreen and the window. So they're getting feedback from the environment, what's going on, so they can make some course corrections of this business as it's moving forward. What they've also got available to them to give them information is a dashboard. And that dashboard itself is feeding information. Obviously, they don't always look down that. They, their talent and skill is to look out the window. But there's still a dashboard gives them very relevant information around speed, oil temperature, those types of things. Sitting in the back seat of this car, you've got your stakeholders or your shareholders. And they're along for the ride, and they're hoping that the things will work out successfully. Um, now, what pulls this car forward? Right? You've got the engine. And really, it's your technology and your people that pull this car forward. So you must see the engine as something that is, is, is uh, not just an IT-based uh, uh, tool, but it's also something that uh, includes your people and, and is really the main driver of the organization. One can also say, well, what are, what are the processes within an organization? So the processes can be seen as the gearbox. In other words, there's a standard set of processes that you would use to engage your technology and your people. And also, you can change gears in other random ways. So there is some flexibility around the processes that I can use within a, in, a, in a random manner. Now, analogy can only go so far. Um, and you know, we've explored ways of looking at the, you know, the, the electricity and the fuel that runs within it. But really, you need to see the electricity as almost the, the funding and, and um, investment and money that, that flows through this particular vehicle to keep it going. Now, the point of architecture is that every one of those little pieces that make up that car, whether it's a, a wheel nut, whether it's the actual wheel, a steering wheel, whether it's a CPU sitting in the engine, all of those are actually parts of your business. They are projects, they are assets, they are individuals, whatever the case may, might be. And to, to make that business successful, they all have to come together into one package. In this case, the analogy, it's one car that moves forward together, pulling together uh, as one unit. And same as your business. Your business needs to operate in the same way. And for example, you could have a Ferrari as your vehicle. But if one little piece of that is out, let's take one of the wheel, um, the, the lead weights that sit on your wheels. And that wheel's out of balance. All that potential, and you ain't going anywhere because you've got some limiting factor. You've also got aspects like um, a, a current state and a future state. Well, what does your business look like now? Is it an old rusty car with you know, wheels? Some of them are flat and the engine isn't tuned. Or is it you know, a slightly more fuel efficient type of vehicle that's a you know, good four cylinder and it can, it can operate effectively? And really, that is the concept of the business. Now, enterprise architecture, in light of this, is the discipline of understanding how all of those parts fit together, where they belong, how they fit together, what the most effective way to fit them together is to pull them forward. And, that, and, and that's the discipline of enterprise architecture. It's helping the business understand how all of those parts fit together to create a cohesive organization. Now, this particular analogy is actually quite good when dealing with stakeholders who, who, want, who really have abstracted from the discipline of all of the nuts and bolts of enterprise architecture. So for example, I was asked one, once by a CIO to talk about, well, can you explain business agility to me? And I used this example. And really what business agility means in light of this analogy is you know, your business is driving along and one of your competitors overtakes you. Well, to be, in it, to be agile, you make a snap decision. Take the car off road. So as you take the car off road, you're now going into rough terrain to try and have a shortcut uh, to, to get ahead of your competitor. Now, while you're driving, you need to be able to take your wheels off the car and put some four-wheel drive wheels on so that you can actually navigate that terrain successfully. And that concept described agility quite successfully for this particular stakeholder. So you can use this example in a variety of ways to demonstrate uh, um, business value to different stakeholders as well. Now, the challenge of enterprise architecture is a balancing act. Basically, you've got to balance um, sort of two disciplines that sit within an organization. What you have on one side of the, of the business is sort of the intuitive side. In other words, this is the entrepreneurial pieces of the organization. 
and they're looking at trying to address unresolved business problems. But sitting on this side, right, you, you're trying to address what's referred to as the logical piece here. Right? And they're trying to develop repeatable processes, right? so things that patterns that we can effectively use consistently. And this is the balancing act that occurs in any organization. And really, we have to traverse along this space here and find this happy medium sp sitting in the middle here. And that is the discipline of enterprise architecture. How can I balance the need to innovate, the need to, to have an entrepreneurial nature within my organization, with also the need to be able to create repeatable processes in the organization? Because ultimately, this is where I manage risk. This is really where investment goes, over here. They're putting the dollars here because they can manage the risk because they're repeatable. So as an architect, that's the space I need to operate in in order to do a, a, a balancing act eff effectively within my organization. So you can have a look at a little more detail of the sort of left and right space. And we've, we've called it the EA head space, looking at the left brain analytical or logical piece and the intuitive right brain. And that's part of your additional resources that you can look through.